Well, good day, folks. Today on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to be taking a look at a power distribution unit that we've installed at our 88 uh, main repeater site that we can control remotely over the internet. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and today we're going to uh, go over some work we recently did at our main repeater site. And so we uh, got together at Worldwide Headquarters, a few of us did, had a good good group that day. And of course it's springtime, so a big part of what we did was a lot of ground maintenance. Uh, even though we stay pretty well on top of this, you know, it's just springtime, we've had a lot of rain and starting to get some sunshine. And the grass was growing, the weeds were growing. We had some limbs that finally got uh, big enough we needed to trim them away from our guy lines. A couple of small trees, in fact, we needed to, uh, to take down. Uh, and that's just the kind of stuff you have to do if you have a repeater site like this. You know, some folks are located in cities and things, and they may not have this kind of maintenance, but they're going to have some kind of maintenance they need to perform at their sites. Timber! <laughs> Uh, but Brian, KY4BDP, and I, we were in the shack on this particular occasion, and we were working to install a new piece of equipment, a power distribution unit from uh, CyberPower. And so what we wanted was the ability to be able to reset equipment over the Internet. Now that we have Internet at this location, which we've wanted for several years, we can now put in a unit like this and be able to reset equipment from home, even, uh, even when he and I travel for work or whatever and try to take care of problems that may come up. Sometimes that's all you need is just to reset a piece of equipment. And this will help us do that without somebody having to roll up the hill there and, uh, and go in the shack and do that. And hopefully when we get internet at our secondary repeater site, uh, the abandoned <laughs> repeater series, uh, you know, that site, uh, we'll be able to do the same thing over there because it's even further away and it is even more trouble to have to try and deal with those issues. So this is the uh, the PDU that uh, that we purchased, the CyberPower PDU 41002. Now this is the 20 amp version. There is a 15 amp version, which is a little bit cheaper. Uh, we went with this one. I I figured pay once, cry once. Uh, this is not a piece of equipment that you have to have in your repeater shack by any means. Uh, it is definitely a bit of a luxury. But if your repeaters are a little bit more remote, a little tougher to get to, especially during you know winter time and some things. Uh, it might be nice to have something like this if you have internet access there because this thing has its own interface and can be remotely managed. And that's the point of putting it up there. So that's the unit that we purchased for those of you that are specifically interested in that. So uh, we get there to the shack. The ground screw went to work. Uh, we couldn't really record any audio <laughs> because there was chainsaws and lawnmowers and weed eaters running constantly the whole time we were there. But uh, we'll go over everything that we were looking at. We had the uh, the CyberPower PDU here, and because this is the 20 amp version, it has a uh, power adapter there with the uh, the angled plug for 20 amp outlets. So there you can see we have 20 amp uh, outlet rated outlets uh, in our shack. And uh, again, if you get the 15 amp version, it'll have kind of regular NEMA 15 uh, plugs on it. And uh, we've got this rack mount unit since we have some racks and things in the, in the shack. Uh, nice, uh, feels like a good build quality. It's not the most expensive unit out there. Again, this is a hobby <laughs> and we want some capability, but we don't necessarily want to spend a ton of money all the time. Uh, no club has an infinite budget and we certainly don't either. Uh, so we're just going to mount this in the rack and we'll be plugging this in, uh, initially or, or a little bit down the road. We're going to be plugging this into, we have a UPS on site now. Uh, we're going to be getting solar on site, hopefully this year as well. Uh, but we'll eventually plug this into uh, to our UPS. So we do need an adapter for those 20 amp plugs so we can go over to the 15 amp style plug-ins. Uh, we don't really expect to draw 20 amps on this unit, but uh, just figured might as well get the upgraded unit uh, again. I uh, don't want to have to purchase a new one of these in the future anytime soon. So as far as mounting this in the rack, uh, and if you've never done this kind of work, uh, KY4, BDP, and I, we work in the IT industry. We've done this stuff for uh, for a long time. It, it's not hard. There, there's mounting holes uh, on rails in the rack. You, you, you take four screws. You just line up your holes, and, and you just screw them in. It's just a way to mount something securely. 
Uh, and since we had these available to us, you could set this on a shelf. Uh, you could mount it in any number of ways. You could mount it vertically, come up with a, a way to mount it vertically. Uh, so we're just adding it into the back end of our shelf here. Uh, this is actually a rack that holds our uh, 70 centimeter uh, Yesu uh, uh, Fusion repeater and our D Star unit and a few things like that. And we're going to be plugging in, as we'll see in a minute, uh, the new um, uh, microwave, uh, you know, uh, internet connectivity uh, equipment. We're going to be plugging in the Wi Fi router. We're going to be plugging in the uh, switch, the regular IP network switch that we're using at this location. And then we'll plug in a few other things down the road as needed, but we wanted some of that equipment. And then we'll eventually get to where we can uh, plug in some of the other equipment again so we can reset things. Because the way the distribution unit works is each one of the power outlets can be independently managed through its web interface. And so if you have a piece of equipment that you suspect needs a reboot, you can log into this thing again remotely and you can say plug number four, you know, reboot, plug number seven, reboot. And, uh, you know, you're not rebooting the entire thing. You're just rebooting that one plug. So just going through a little bit of the interface here, pretty simple local interface. And then it has a web-based interface if you're on the network, or even if you can come in, uh, you know, over the internet, uh, which we have a secure VPN uh, so we can do that uh, and get to the equipment uh, remotely. Uh, you know, again, it seems like a pretty nice unit. I uh, can't wait to uh, to use it more and more, and hopefully it will save us some some trouble down the road. Uh, again, not terribly inexpensive, but uh, potentially a time saver. Uh-oh. Looks like we're being invaded by our nemesis, ham hacker Randy. Let me see if I can kick him out of here. All right, there he goes. All right, yeah, you've got to watch Randy. He'll uh, try to spy on your operations when he can. So, um, yeah, so far it seems like a decent unit. Uh, we've got a remote connectivity set up on that. And we'll be adding more things to the switch ports on this pretty soon. It's got eight, eight switch ports on it. Of course, really not much of a load right now. Uh, here we're just transferring the first set of devices we're going to plug into this. We'll probably end up using almost all those, those power ports at some point. Uh, but right now, again, it's the, um, the connector for the uh, microwave uh, internet. That's that little box with the white uh, power cord right there. Then we're going to connect the uh, local Wi-Fi router and the local uh, switch that we have. Those are the first pieces of equipment. So uh, we really hope that this is going to help us to manage our remote locations uh, going forward because we have had a few issues as, as anybody would if you're maintaining uh, uh, your, uh, your, your equipment and your, your repeaters and things. Uh, in fact, KY4BDP Brian had to go all the way out to our monocell site and that's probably a 40-45 minute drive to go up the hill out there and, and, to, and just to reboot a piece of equipment. Uh, and it's the kind of thing you have to do, but we're going to try to make that kind of simple maintenance a little bit easier for folks where we could do this from anywhere uh, in the, in the world, really certainly anywhere in the country. Uh, because once you get on the internet, you can take care of that. Uh, so here we just got a nice close up, just showing we only got a little bit of equipment plugged in. So there's almost no load still, but, uh, it'll just, uh, cycle through this. It'll show you the current, uh, input and output. Uh, from the uh, current use perspective, and then if there are any alerts on any of the plugs, it'll uh, let you know that, and then it goes to power save mode. Uh, I wanted to kind of start wrapping this video up and just finish off with, uh, this is just a quick screen capture out of the, uh, out of the manual for this, uh, and just to kind of show you, because this kind of gives you an idea of the web interface. Again, it has a web interface that you can get to if you have a computer uh, hooked up on, on a local connection, local network, or again, if you can set things up to where you have a remote connection like we do, again, you can go in there and you can do various kinds of configurations and maintenance and monitoring and things, uh, even from, uh, from anywhere really on the internet. Uh, and so when you have club members that are maybe in charge of helping to maintain your equipment and maybe they, they work or they travel and whatever, again, it would be nice to be able to do this pretty much anytime, anywhere. Uh, and so that's one reason we wanted to go with this unit. Not terribly inexpensive, but we felt like it was going to really help us improve our ability to maintain our equipment. And once we get got internet at this location, it opens up a lot of doors. In fact, we had a recent hands-on with Elkara, which we do once a month, and we uh, we talked about and kind of brainstormed with our club members. 
you know, what are some of the things that we would like to do and now that we are able to do now that we have internet access at this site and we're excited to get internet access to our secondary site as well because it'll open up these kind of maintenance types of capabilities. But other activities, you know, DSTAR and, and C4FM, and uh, DMR and all kinds of potential activities. We now have an APRS unit up here, uh, things like that. So we're going to start wrapping this one up, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP, for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Stay tuned for our future videos. We uh, have videos every Friday and occasionally, like this one, on a Wednesday. Uh, check out our website, lcara.net, and, uh, of course, Facebook and Instagram. We will see you folks in the next video, 73.